Welcome everyone to another session of Jetson AI Labs. This time we have a lot of people here. Some of them are from the Manchester University and others are from Tech Monterrey. They have been doing an amazing project together, which is called Puzzlebot, and probably Alexandru can start speaking about it. Hello everyone. Thank you for this opportunity. As Asier introduced uh, me, we are from uh, Manchester University and Manchester Robotics as well. So uh, I'm a lecturer uh, in control uh, engineering and, uh, and robotics, and uh, we participate uh, together with NVIDIA to this project named PuzzleBot, in which uh, we join uh, universities and uh, professors uh, who teach uh, some courses in robotics, and uh, when they teach uh, theoretical uh, aspects of robotics, we propose some uh, real challenges, some real applications, together with uh, real robotic platform, affordable uh, to be given to each uh, uh, student. And uh, then we solve together the challenge. And uh, at the end, we organize a competition where the students can present their solutions and uh, discuss uh, the problems they have and uh, all other aspects. Maybe Costas can... Uh... Yes, and um, the, 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 this autonomous uh, robotic platform uh, provides the right flexibility to the learner to, to be introduced into concepts of um, automation, uh, navigation, recognition, uh, but also with the NVIDIA Jetson uh, to do and perform exercises and tasks uh, related to AI. And uh, the attraction of having this uh, robotic platform uh, is its connectivity with uh, all these other devices that uh, enable students uh, to learn about um, uh, automation, about navigation, autonomous driving, uh, and all these um, fascinating things related to uh, Industry 4.0. Uh, and those skills will be so valuable in uh, the near future when those students graduate and they go out there to get those well-paid jobs. So we feel very, very proud that uh, our robotic platform enabled uh, these young learners to be introduced uh, at these concepts and uh, writing uh, uh, simple algorithms to test them with this robotic platform. Very good. So who wants to start from, from Tech Monterrey to speak about the experience? Exactly. That's the most important the, the, the user. The <laughs> yeah. let, let me try to explain first uh, what Tech 21 means. By doing so, I have to explain what's Tech de Monterrey. Monterrey, it's a national wide university with presence in uh, many um, cities, 29 uh, campuses. And we are a very dynamic uh, private university with the idea in the DNA of the Tech de Monterrey to always be relevant in our community, in our country, and also internationally. The high skill uh, jobs that the industry and in, in this topic, robotic industry needs, starts to going far from the actual graduated. So we need to rethink about the how to do teaching with the students. So that's the Tech 21 comes from. One of these um, element of the Tech de Monterrey is a revolutionary educational model based on challenges. And for uh, Tech de Monterrey, it's very easy to realize that NVIDIA is one of the leaders in robotics. Also in other fields, uh, graphics, computer graphics, intelligent, artificial intelligence, and robotics. By talking with NVIDIA, we learned that they have um, this wonderful collaboration with Manchester Robotics, with Manchester University through the uh, Manchester Robotics. And then it was a very easy decision because they fit uh, 
wonderful with this idea of learn in a new way with the students. Bring to the classroom a platform that all the students can work with, a platform that is uniform, that has a very powerful processor with all these relevant sensors and do robotics by the very first, first day. So I hope this explains why we are now working together with Manchester Robotics. Thank you very much, Alejandro. Uh, so maybe the students, maybe Marcela, Jose Angel can speak about the experience. Yeah. Uh the project that we uh, developed was uh, an autonomous driving robot. And uh, it, it was uh, like that's super for an for a undergraduate student. It was uh, super encouraging. It was uh, really uh, entertaining and uh, it, it was like a, a really fun task and also like uh, super exciting to develop something that is uh, so such in a state of our technology. Also like uh, learning from the basics like computer vision being able to pass those knowledge of computer vision, of robotics to a hardware platform like uh, MIDI Jetson and like having all the, this computer power to make the small autonomous navigating robot. It was like uh, a really great experience. Yeah, I'm, I'm still excited about the project and I think I'll learn a lot all these computer vision algorithms and also like uh, of AI algorithms. It was pretty fun. Also, we have here Katia and Marcio from, from NVIDIA. I don't know if you have any kind of questions. I have some, for example, Jose Angel or Marcela, can you speak about the project which you did? Because I know the Puzzlebot platform, but probably people watching this, they don't know the platform. I know you have this kind of track that, that is a kind of puzzle that you can mount and that you can drive over it. Can you speak about what you did on the project or maybe the professors? Yeah, if you don't mind, let me, let me just comment something that I think is very important. As you know, robotics is actually the paradise of uncertainty. On the graduate students, as those that it's coming with us today, uh, they used to wonder about real applications. Basically, those that are actually working on robotics and and this digital design. We, as roboticists, we used to say that we are actually doing applied science fiction. So now, with the help of Manchester Robotics and Nvidia, we can help them to come back to reality. I do remember the complexities. On, on the real and the use of real robots. I was fortunate to carry on my PhD in, in France and then to make a postdoctoral in Oxford. And I was uh, involved in robotics applications and industrial robotics. And now, 20, 20 years after that, there is a, a dream that come to reality. Help the students to deal, thanks to NVIDIA and Manchester Robotics, to go together to the future, because at the end, we have more and more complexities. And now with NVIDIA technology and the future NVIDIA technology, we can help to understand the reality with the help of technology. So we are very glad. And as you will see the examples of the students, they achieve fantastic results with the use of the technology. Thank you so much, Alberto. Do you have any kind of examples you can share? Oh, uh, no. I, mean, I, I, what, I remember what, watching some what, good videos. What impressed me of the exercise when the Tech de Monterey students uh, uh, present their project uh, uh, was the, the enthusiasm uh, and um, how quickly they've learned and they applied uh, the theoretical concept into actual tasks uh, that their platform uh, executed. And I was really impressed with the traffic light exercise and follow the line exercise, uh, having their own individual robotic platform. Uh, and I think that was the, the uniqueness, the uniqueness of the project. Yeah, we are seeing now the, what, what Alberto is sharing. Uh, so this, this document, Alberto, maybe you can speak over it or show the videos. Yes, of course. Actually, here, here you can see the, the setup that thanks to the help of Manchester Robotics, we achieved to integrate in, in that platform. So uh, you can see, for example, what is actually simulating the streets. And then you can see how the robots are actually evolving according to the behavior. So we have the camera sensors in front of the robot of the puzzle bot, and you can see the, the street signals. And then the robot is actually determining how to follow up to track the lines or eventually taking some decisions on the image processing according at what is actually observing on the images. As you can see, there is a lot of noise. 
could use uh, machine learning, deep learning in that case, in such a way to better understand, for example, the circumstances in which the robot were moving around. So we can determine when to turn right, turn left, when to stop actually. And as well, when he achieves to identify exactly the strict signals, he can take some decisions. So the, the idea is that you can see how the robot is actually evolving according to the information it's actually gathering with the signals. We have, for example, another equipment that helps to integrate all the platform with the, with the Jetson. So the, the main idea is that we, we can see how the students were really solving the main problems involving on the practical robotics to the help of the Jetson. And what is very interesting is that we can actually change the composition of the streets. This is part of the puzzle facilitation that Manchester Robotics provides us. So we can integrate several schemas in which we can perfectly identify that we can change all the parameters that needs to be integrated on the arena. Alejandro is sharing the, the screen too. So I'm gonna switch to, uh, do you want to, to comment Alejandro? The main ideas were presented by Alberto. So just to add that we divided in small challenges through 10 weeks. Build the robot by itself is a small challenge. Introduce into the robotic operating system, uh, make the robot to draw a small square in, in on the floor is another challenge. Navigate uh, point uh, to point, uh, follow a line, work with the basic computer vision algorithms, and then he, uh, introduce the students to deep neural networks. It was another challenge by itself. So uh, at the very end, it was very exciting to see all the students solving the, the challenge. I'm curious to learn which kind of software and software frameworks do you use? Yeah, uh, we work with lots of operating system, programming mainly on Python. Uh, we use Node methodology, so, well, my team specifically, we divided all of, all of the different tasks that the, that the robot were uh, asked to do in different nodes, and a master node was controlling the other nodes. Mm -hmm. And how many deep learning uh, neural networks are used for this task? We, uh, for our solution, we implemented one uh, convolutional neural ne network. Mm -hmm. To plan the trajectory or to detect the road signs, what does it do? The uh, neural network uh, detects the predict uh, which uh, traffic uh, signs is seen. So based on that prediction, the behavior of the robot change. Nice. Um, did you experience any challenges uh, developing this and putting this network on a device like Jetson Nano? Yes, we have a lot, uh, some issues. Uh, we we are new. We were learning with each time we make a new neural network. We made, I think, like ten. We were we were learning learning about how to change the, the different parameters of the neural network to make it uh, more accurate. We were uh, having some issues with the version of Python that we were using because uh, Ross in the version of Ross we were using. We were uh, programming with Python 2, I believe, and the library of TensorFlow that we used to make the, the, ne the network, we were using Python 3, so we were uh, experiencing some kind of issues, uh, uh, learning how to connect both uh, versions of Python. Mm -hmm. How about uh, computer vision algorithms? What kind of algorithms do you use? Do you use? We used a lot of a lot of uh, vision, uh, computer vision. We mainly use OpenCV to mm -hmm. apply lots of filters. Uh, we use a lot of OpenCV functions like find contours, like uh, mm -hmm. simple blob detectors to detect uh, the shapes of the traffic uh, signs as mm -hmm. well as the uh, the traffic lights. Yeah, from my side, uh, what I can say is that. Um, in my campus, mostly uh, we also used open source um, tools like TensorFlow for neural networks, and also Ross. As same as Marcella, we used OpenCV uh, for several uh, vision algorithms. Jetson was really good processing uh, algorithms uh, and segmenting images. Also, like uh, making simple algorithms like adding mask to an image. From my side, uh, we were running around eleven Ross nodes or something like that. 
yeah and, and at the same at these nodes uh we're making several vision algorithms and adding masks to images and all these work parallelly nice uh, really glad to hear that you managed to make it work such a complex application on such a tiny device really congratulations Yes, congratulations on the success. So, yeah, this was what we have been speaking about a year ago, maybe Costas and Alexander. What do you think about the, the progress of these uh, professors and students in Mexico? <clears throat> I, I think uh, what impressed me, it was um, the flexibility from uh, both parties uh, to learn from, uh, from each other and make sure that the ultimate aim uh, was the the education uh, of the students uh, and the, uh, the skills uh, that uh, they obtained at the end of the, of the, of the course uh, and how much they enjoyed the, the, the exercise. So from our point of view as educators, uh, we would like to repeat that, that, that exercise uh, with uh, more institutions uh, mm -hmm. uh, across, across Mexico, but also beyond. And as okay. Katia, uh, explained uh, it's uh, that small device how how easily accommodates and connects with uh, the jetson to perform to perform those 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 tasks uh, and the other impressive thing was how responsive the robotic platform was uh, in the traffic light uh, uh, changing uh, one of your students um, showed us uh, a video clip uh, where he was running in front of the robot uh, and uh, he was showing right and the robot immediately was stopping and then green and immediately was going. So it was very fast, very fast response. Was, uh, that was quite, quite impressive. So um, one thing, uh, what would you say to the education institutions that they want to join this program if any institution in latin america or europe wants to to join what they should do to talk to talk to talk to us and we can share those experiences i suppose the idea behind the exercise uh, is not uh, to educate say a professor in robotics or change the way they teach or whatever but uh, is to tell us uh, uh, what kind of needs they have evolve the platform to accommodate those additional needs that they may have. Okay, and one question, maybe this is for Alexandru. I remember that you were working also with, uh, with the wings of some airplanes to detect some kind of things with some advanced robotics. So this course seems to be Focus on the first year, so second year students, maybe. Do you have something maybe more advanced for the future? <clears throat> yes, because uh, as the name say, uh, the name of this platform is PuzzleBot. Uh, we have uh, the possibility to add, remove several type of sensors, uh, actuators, and <clears throat> and of course this platform uh, is already used uh, in uh, Manchester University and other universities for uh, research. PhD research, postdoc research for some projects uh, where we can um, add, uh, for instance, uh, if you want to inspect a nuclear environment where uh, it's, it's dangerous to send humans to, to sense the, uh, uh, the uh, radiations there, so you just uh, attach to, to, to this robot uh, their sensors, they have to measure the radiations, and send this autonomous robot there uh, to do this kind of augmented uh, map with uh, radiation sources. So uh, what I want to say is that it's easy to adapt to, as Costa said, to uh, their applications. It doesn't matter if the applications come from uh, teaching, from professors, or from uh, industry, or from uh, research uh, uh, projects. OK, and another question for the students. So. What do you want to do in the future with these kind of platforms? Do you have any kind of project in mind? Something you want to achieve during your career? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, the next semester, uh, I is uh, starting a kind of a specialty, a minor, maybe, on uh, intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, more specifically neural network, based on that I have all this knowledge from this challenge and from working with the Jetson from NVIDIA and from working with visual, with, with computer vision, 
I want to start this uh, new chapter of my education and to work with this kind of implementation specifically on autonomous driving uh, cars. Mm -hmm. Very nice, very nice. For that, maybe you should move in the future to the AGX Orin, the new device we have, the dev kit. We, we should start doing something in the future with that a powerful device. Anything else from anyone else that you want to speak about, Alexandru? Uh, I like what the, that this is a good uh, usage for this uh, platform because, uh, as Marcela said, uh, you, you can start uh, having a configuration of this puzzle board platform, uh, for instance, in year one, year two, or year three. And then you can add uh, more complex uh, computing units, more uh, complex sensors and actuators, and continue having the same uh, basic platform, the same robotic companion by adding more functionalities. So uh, you can uh, have it with you during all your uh, learning journey uh, from uh, year one, year two, up to uh, MSc level, PhD, postdoc level. So this is also very important to achieve uh, skills uh, faster and uh, easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's good that we started doing this on, on Latin America. I think Mexico has a lot of talent and people are, are eager to do this kind of, of things. Also, if you want to do more things on Latin America, Marcio is your your person in, in charge because he's, he's located there uh, in, in Latin America and, and he's in contact with a lot of universities in different countries. Yeah, no, it's uh, thank you for the opportunity to be here, guys. I mean, it's kind of very great to hear all the you know, researchers and in work that you guys are doing with our technology. I would like to eventually be publishing that into our social medias in the region so we can get, you know, more uh, engagement with the researchers community in Mexico. There's also, uh, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, we do have an installation at the Tech of Monterey. There is a, a DGX A100, which is our supercomputer. This is on a partnership with Latin X AI, which is an organization in Latin America managed by some researchers in Mexico. Perhaps if you guys need to run uh, a much heavier, you know, workload, we can give you guys access to this uh, supercomputer that's installed at the Tech of Monterey at the Mexico City campus. So again, I'm gonna put my uh, my email here in the chat, so you guys feel free to reach me out and I'll be glad to support you guys in any of your, you know, future researchers, okay? Very good. For training, that is really good to have a DGX. <laughs> okay, so thank you everyone uh, for being part of this call. And yeah, looking forward for the next uh, projects. Also, we have GTC really, really soon on September, uh, third week of, of September. Mm -hmm. All of you should register, all the audience should register to go there. And probably we can speak about this project in the next GTC, because I think this is a really good success story to speak about maybe in, in, in spring. So good work, students, professors, and uh, Manchester. And thank you for joining Katia and Marcio from Media. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank and have so a much. good summer, guys. Have a good summer. <laughs>